What's up, everyone? Thank you for nice from us. You're so running. How are you guys doing? Hopefully good. I'm great. This is a special episode because this is the first time I'm actually going to show you one of my sessions and I'm going to break down how I wrote it. This is going to be something really new. It's uh, kind of exciting for me. It's a little scary to show one of my sessions and to share it with such a big audience. So um, please be kind. Uh, this is something that we've worked on for quite a while. Please make sure you check out the video up here. Also, if you want to want to make sense of what I'm talking about in this video, it's a good idea to listen to the song first. Also, while you're there, make sure you subscribe and leave a like for Jobasa. It's always needed for artists like yourself. You know how that feels if you get a like and a nice comment. Always a nice thing. So make sure she feels some love from you guys. So without further ado, let's look at Hate Her. I gotta say that I think about we have All right, so let's get into how the session works. And again, if you haven't listened to the song, please do that now, because otherwise, you know, you won't understand a couple of the things that we do in here. First of all, let's start with the piano, because that is the hook of the song, and specifically the bass. And this is kind of what I'm talking about here. This is the most important part of the entire song. And obviously it's aided in the right hand by this. Okay, so that is the most important part of the song. That continues throughout pretty much the entire song. And in terms of structuring, this song is fairly simple. There's not much going on. We have a verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. Then there's also post-chorus, so pre and post-chorus. That's a lot. Uh, this is kind of slightly unusual. Then second verse, which is half the size of the first verse, pre-chorus, chorus, post-chorus. Post then we have a bridge, which is about the same size as the chorus and post-chorus. And then we have another chorus, a singular chorus at the end there, uh, so no double chorus, which is also something we often see. And then we have an outro. All right, so that's kind of the basic structuring of the entire song. Let's get into it. So again, we've had this little uh, piano lick here. And uh, as you can see, it consists of actually five parts, not just two. So what's happening here? Well, this is a technique known as layering. And it's kind of a complicated technique, so it's not something I really want to go into right now. But it is uh, something that we do to make sounds a little bit bigger to make them fill up the frequency spectrum better. This is an advanced technique, so if you're just a beginner in production, this is not something I would recommend to you. But here, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is the, the right hand piano playing the backbeats. And if we add this, so if we look at this uh, patch right here, it's pretty much the same as this one. As you can see, the, the effects are the same. If I move down to this one, almost the same. But for this one, for the second one, I took out a lot of the low end, which is something you don't really hear if they play together. This sounds totally fine, but if you hear it in uh, isolation, this sounds very, very thin. But since that's not important, it's just how it plays when everything is playing together. That's the important bit, right? So that's what layering is, essentially. Uh, as you can see, also what's interesting is the panning here, the main piano here is panned all the way to the right. And this piano here, pan to the left. So together you get a little bit of a stereo effect. Also note that I didn't pan them all the way to the left and all the way to the right. That's something I kind of want to wait with until I get to the chorus. That's where I really want to explore my stereo spectrum. This is still the verse, so I don't want to go overboard right now. Then we have the main bass line here, which is doubled with this, this very thin sound here. Again, it's just adding a little bit of a high edge to it. And then we have a synth to make it sound a little bit more modern. Doesn't sound very modern by itself, but together. It's very soft in there. A lot of the times when I'm layering, I pull in something very, very softly just to add a slight edge to it. Okay, I'm not even sure if you can hear this uh, on YouTube because YouTube obviously um, takes out a lot of the audio information. So hopefully you will be able to. Anyways, uh, also I should want to say one more thing. The mix, the final mix that you hear on the music video was not done by me. So this is the final production, but it is not the final mix, just to clarify that for just a second. Uh, so then we got this reverse piano here. So it's just leading into that first verse. I just wanted to add a little bit more interest so this, even those four bars don't get boring. Then we have this add mode on here, which just adds a little bit of a shimmer, a little bit of a shine to that intro. 
This is so I like this. Uh, this is all automated as well. So this comes in slowly on each track is automated individually. And then we have a master automation up here in the in the track stack, which also brings it in. Again, I'm my goal with this was to like slowly vamp up amp up towards the verse, I want everyone to be clear that this is only temporary, there will be vocals very, very soon. You know, even though it's just four bars, I want everyone to know that we're going somewhere. So this is a classic tension technique. If you've read the addiction formula, you will know what that means. So let's move on to the verse, right? Yes. So in the verse, we're adding like, first of all, this bass drum. And uh, this is a singular bass drum, even though this is in a track stack, this is just one bass drum. Uh, the track stack is only for the chorus where we add a second bass drum, but we'll get to that. So now we also get a, a, a snap on the two and four, which sounds like this. Okay, very simple, nothing special to it. Then down here, I'm taking out the right hand of the piano, which uh, makes it sound very, very empty. Also, you can hear that this right here, the Atmo is side chained. And this is happening from this ghost kick up here. Um, if you don't know what side chaining is, or what a ghost kick is, never, never mind what I'm about to say. This here is basically just going to a bus. And this has no output. So you can't actually hear this, right? This is a silent bass drum. That's why it's called a ghost kick. And that feeds the compressor for this thing right here, right? So if you look at that, see, so you can hear the the Atma going right so it just adds a little bit of movement just to keep it rhythmical because we don't have that backbeat anymore i wanted to keep it rhythmical then we get the sine bass over here which is basically the drop so let, let's listen to that in isolation so i could have just dragged in a sample but i wanted to really control the length of it and also how fast it goes down and so what i did i just grabbed a sign added, uh, you know, increased the glissando a little bit. And that made it a made me uh, made it possible to just basically draw my own drop. Right, super simple, and very effective. Moving on to the pre chorus, this is where things get really interesting. First of all, we're adding a new subdivision. So this here we have some quintuplets. But I got to be honest, when I when I made this, so look at this, here's here's I'll make one of those um, snare drum rolls. Um, which sounds like I'm a chef or something. It's, you know, here's how I'll make one of my tasty snare drum rolls. Um, basically, what I'll do is I'll just hit L, which brings up the loop on of that sample. And then I'll just drag it until I get a couple of them in a bar and I try to make it so it hits on the next beat, right? So this would be kind of bad because I'm cutting off a sample. So I'm kind of trying to like, it's just an approximation, it doesn't have to be super exact. But this would be it. And this just gives me a quintuplet. I could also go maybe for 16th notes. Is, is that 16th notes? I'm not, not even sure. It might be 30 second notes. It's probably 30 second notes. And this is what it sounds like. And that just comes, sounds a little bit too straight for me. Look, listen to this. Sounds a little boring, right? So I find quintuplets is where it really starts to get interesting. Like sextuplets, quintuplets. Sextuplets is even like... I'm not even sure it's a little bit too clean for me. So for quintuplets, I've always found seem to be working the best. Because that's just seems like a lot of notes very quickly. And it sounds like there's no clear denomination as to what you've just heard. It just sounds like Oh, yeah, there's just a lot of notes. This just kind of breaks up the subdivision a little bit. And that's something that I do like then what happens here in the piano, this is kind of cool, we add the backbeat, but we're only adding that backbeat on the two. So if you compare this to the chorus here, where we have a backbeat on the two and four, here it's just on the two, which means we have a lot of space for the vocals. And that is really important. I want to bring in that backbeat again, but I want to keep everything open and relaxed. So that was like my kind of my goal with this section. Listen to this. Silence. Also, what you see in here in the piano, like the da da da, this part here is muted. So you might that's why you see it up here, I can actually delete this because we're not going to use this anymore. So it's still kind of very, very empty compared to the beginning where we got. Then we got this sine bass here, which basically just doubles the hook right up here. Right. And this here, if you look at both of these together, it looks like the sine bass is higher than the piano line that doesn't really make much sense because the 
synthesizers tuned so low. Anyways, so that's not really an actual representation of the octaves that these instruments are in, just as a little side note here. Um, but what you can see is that it's really following the same line. So we have G, G, F, and here we also have G, 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 F. So it's just adding this little high note in there. Same thing over here with, what is that, an E flat to a C, and the bass, bass plays E, E flat, E flat, E flat, C, right? So it's just adding in that little disco kind of bass in there, which is like a typical thing that bassists like to do, and it's giving you a lot of pumping action because you have a lot of stress mm -hmm on those off beats here, which makes the whole thing a little bit more bouncy. And again, this is a dance track, so that's something that's good. Also here at the bottom, we have a synthesizer um, playing, or actually this is a sample that I made with a synthesizer. Um, that's just playing white noise that I filtered and then did a fade on for, fade in for, so it's slowly opening up towards the chorus. And then what happens in the chorus? Well, first of all, we start this chorus by leaving out half a bar of just music. So it's just silence for half a bar. And this I often do because it just really creates some more boost for the chorus. If you have silence right before it, man, those choruses hit even harder. So what happens here in the in the chorus? Well, first of all, we got all of these drums. Look at all the, that pink here on the screen. That's all pretty much new for the chorus. And it starts with this bass drum up here. This one we have heard before in the verse. But it is layered with this bass drum here. Together. And again, if you look at the EQing for this bass drum, a lot of the low end was taken out. Something that doesn't sound really good on its own. But together. It just gives it a little bit more high end, a little bit more punch, right? Then we add a bunch of snares to it. This one. This one. Clap. And another clap. Together. And then down here, I also added a reverse to give it a little bit more of that pumping, offbeat, um, lift off, jumpy kind of feel to make it more danceable. And uh, then on all the offbeats, I'm adding an open hi-hat, which adds to that effect. Then on the one, we also get a crash with a ping pong delay on it, as you can hear. Right, just to create a little bit more stereo spectrum here. And this is also panned off slightly to the side. Otherwise, everything here is obviously panned straight to the center, except for the hi-hat, which is panned slightly to the right. So we got this slightly on the left and this here slightly to the right, because these occupied uh, similar frequency spectrums. Now, then we move on to this, which also adds to the bounciness of it all. And together with everything else, this is what it sounds like. And this hi-hat we're gonna talk about at a later stage. Now, moving on to the main piano sound of the chorus. As you can see, we're adding two new tracks, this one and this one. The first one here is just to fill in the frequency spectrum a little bit more. And this one here adds some high notes at the top. It's also slightly different melodies, a slightly different melody than what we had before. So the chords are slightly different. The harmony is the same, obviously, but the, the voicing is a little bit different. And this is what it sounds like together. Okay, so this is our new piano sound for the chorus. And then obviously we're adding a bunch of low end as well. So let's maybe start with the downlifter here. That's some very simple stuff. That's kind of like an electronic type of crash, the electronic version of a crash. We also have some noise, which is leading up to the next session, which is the biggest part of the song. And then we're adding, so that sign bass we had in the pre-chorus, which played that da, 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 now it's just playing very simply that, that hook. So no more uh, octave jumps there, because it's not necessary. Uh, so I took it out. And then we have this synth bass, which sounds like this, which is doubled above to give it a little bit more of a high-end edge. Okay, so that's the chorus. Now, here is, so this is, I, I didn't talk about this, this is just a gated snare. All right, that's pretty much all that is. Now let's talk about one of the most interesting things about this song. 
once we get to the post-chorus, you might have heard this when you listen to the song, um, the post-chorus has a slightly different feel than the rest of the song because the post-chorus is shuffled 16th notes. For the first time, we have, we're introducing shuffled 16th notes. Everything else in the song is very straight 16th notes. So listen to this for just a second. So that's triplets, right? That's the first time we get this. But in order to make that transition from straight 16th notes to triplet 16th notes a little bit smoother, what I'm doing is using this hi-hat right here. And as you can see, the automation for this starts off at minus uh, infinity decibel, meaning you can't hear it in the beginning. So this starts off, the, this chorus here starts off completely straight, but then we hear that hi-hat come in. That's triplet feel. Can you hear that? So we're slowly transitioning from a straight 16th note feel to a shuffled 16th note feel. And that's what makes that work. Apart from that, what I really was challenged by with this section was that it sounds really different in terms of the, the, the timing. And so I really had to find some ways to make those two sections glue together well. And first of all, I did that by using the same sounds as much as possible. So as you can see, I'm keeping the same bass drum, keeping that same clap, keeping the same uh, that same clap and that snare. I'm also keeping uh, the piano down here, which is obviously the integral part of the song. We're keeping those brush snares and we're keeping some of the bass synths. We're also adding a bunch of new stuff. This is actually what this section brings in terms of new things. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But just to gel those two sections together, I just wanted to use a lot of these old sounds. As you can also see, I took a lot of the drums out. And this is something that I found really important, especially in a section like this, where that's the high point of the song in a way. Like this is the most danceable, danceable part of the entire song. So here I want this to hit really, really hard. But that also means I will have to take some stuff out in order to not overwhelm my audience. So I took out the second bass drum. It wasn't really necessary. The second snare wasn't necessary. The reverse wasn't necessary. And that hi-hat on the offbeats wasn't necessary. So I took all of that out. And even that crash on the one wasn't necessary. Took all of that out. This is a stripped down version of the drum groove and I want it to hit hard and I want it to sound simple. The brush snares stayed the same. Then we get the melody. So the this section basically consists of just two parts. There's really no harmony here. It's just two parts. First of all, we have the melody, which is also played by the piano. And this is doubled up down here by various instruments. So the first one is a little pluck. Second one, this that's some hip hop horns, which we'll hear later again. And this together. So that's one part of it. Together with this piano, it sounds like this. Okay, so it keeps that flavor from the piano. That's what ties it back to the entire song and keeps it coherent but it also adds that synth flavor to it. Then we have the bass, and this is obviously what you guys wanna know about, so let's talk about that for just a second. This is what the bass sounds like. The first version I had of this just had uh, notes like this, so it went all the way, every single bar was filled. I'll show you what that sounds like. And that doesn't really give you that jumpy feel, does it? And this is something I only figured out once I sang this. And this is why I always tell you guys to sing all of your lines. I sang this bass line and I figured out that da 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 ga da da ga da da it doesn't sound as good as da 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 ga da da ba da da And so that's how I get got this little space here. That gives that line a little bit more breath and this is what it sounds like now. And that gives it like that jumpiness. It's weird, but if you take that out, if you make it, um, if you quantize it too much, basically, it doesn't sound human anymore and it loses all of its appeal to me. So this is what it sounds like now with all the timing. Let's listen to the bass in isolation again. So let's listen to the different instruments. First of all, we got this saw bass here. That's just really adding a little bit of an edge to something else. 
This is the main base here. Though we also have these hip hop horns that I talked about earlier. Which has a nice, trashy, hip-hop kind of sound. It sounds really underground. It's something I really like. It also works well with this down here. These are offbeat haze. Right, so that works well together, I think. It's got that same trashy kind of, kind of vibe, but it has a lot of character, so that's why I keep this in. And then we have a pluck. So this is one of my favorite things in the entire song. Uh, this is just some really fast notes, and uh, it's basically just like arpeggios going up, and this is probably just, uh, this is just G minor, is it? Uh, G, B flat, D, F, so with uh, an F in there as well, G, B flat, D, F, so it's a G flat minor, a, a G minor 7. So it's going up in 3, 3, 5, 3, 5, 4, yeah, that's kind of the, the pattern that I chose for this. And it doesn't really matter what the pattern is, to be honest. What matters is that it's really fast. And uh, the patch by itself sounds like this. So kind of boring. It's not really something very in that's very interesting. But together, if you play this really fast, it sounds like this. And that is something I definitely do like. Then we get these vocals down here, which is just a hey now. This is not in the, in the vocal session. This we just recorded really quickly because I had the idea when we were working in this section. And I just wanted to um, record it real quickly. And uh, it just stuck. We never re-recorded it in the vocal session for some reason. And then we have another one of my favorite things, which is this who right here. This is also placed on a shuffled 16th note, which further adds to that effect of that really shuffled feel. Listen to it, what it sounds like together. And then the, the different vo voices were... Right, and as you can hear, they're all panned slightly apart. 9, 32, 32, 43. So they're all, all over the place, actually. If you listen to that in the mix... So that's something I really, really like. That little, that little thing is one of my favorite things in the entire song. Uh, here we have a little bit of noise to bring back, to get a little bit more of that pumping. This is something I actually learned a while ago from a really great producer, is whenever you're producing silence, you have to make sure that that silence is noticed. So you don't just have silence there. You have to make sure that people know that you did that on purpose and that it leads somewhere. So you have to produce silence. And uh, it just brings back the, the beat, basically. The, oh, you know, it opens that back up. And lastly, in this section, we have this 80s like pluck lead here, which sounds like this. More like a bell sound, but yeah. Anything else I wanna talk about here? No, that's pretty much it. So let's move on to verse number two, where we add this little piano here. First of all, we have a little bit of an impact and a crash, not really something special, so I'm not gonna talk about that. But then we get this little um, Latin American feeling uh, piano pattern, which, doesn't look good here, so let's just open it up in piano roll. Uh, this took a long time. As you can see, there's some muted notes in there still. This took a long time to figure out how, how much of these notes was needed to give it that Latin American salsa kind of feel without over overloading it. So that was a lot of back and forth. There were some notes in this first bar as well, which I took out later because it was just too much, and there was more stuff happening here that interfered with the vocals. That took a lot of back and forth to really figure out how that works. As you can see, it's basically just the chords going down with it's basically the same chord um but then the bass line just goes down from g f sharp f and uh, then we go to e d sharp d sharp and then we go to d which is the five and on this we have this inversion which we're going to talk about in just a sec um and this is what it sounds like Okay, so this is just basically five chord resolving to one. This is the the most traditional you'll ever hear me harmonize anything, basically. But what we have here is we have that D in the bass, so that gives us a clear five. And then here, I'm actually playing a D sharp, a, a D probably, right? This is an F sharp, D, and A, yes. So that is in, what is that, first inversion? Um, and then we have that same thing, but this time, we're actually adding a C, meaning that is the seven 
of the the D7 of the, so it becomes a dominant chord which make that makes that whole thing even tenser because it adds a tritone which should be between let's see uh the F sharp and the C yeah so that's that's the tritone actually then we get this chord here which adds an E flat meaning we get a flat 9 and then we have I think this is just another E flat C F sharp so yeah it just takes the most important notes from that uh, D7 chord and repeats them in a different inversion. And then here, we just really resolve it to very simply to the to the one, which is a G, uh, G minor. So we have the B flat, D and G here. And then this is just backbeats as we had before. The second half of the second verse, we add that snap again that we heard in the first verse. And we also add this hi hat because I want to get that feel back of, of the shuffle 16th notes. And this is fairly similar in terms of the drums to pre-chorus one, but then we have all of this here filtered, as you can see here. Uh, hold on, this should be a high cut frequency. So we have the piano filtered out. And the same thing happens for this bass here. And this here is not filtered. As you can see, it's just it's just increasing the volume a little bit, or maybe it's rather decreasing the volume in the beginning. I didn't want to I didn't want the bass to overpower the piano. But what mostly it is doing is it's um, using the modulation wheel to open up the filter that is in the synthesizer itself. So that's how I control that with the modulation wheel, not so much with the with a filter that is external. Then we move into another chorus which is the exact same as the first chorus, except for this guitar right here. A human flavor, and then we have the post chorus, which is, post -chorus, which is again exactly as the first post chorus. And then we have the bridge, which was a lot of work to figure out. Um, here we have some noise that's leading up to the last chorus. And let's look at what the piano is doing here. So the piano, First of all, there's some bass here added at the end to just um, make it a little bit bigger to make that build a little bit more. And again, as you can see, I'll use the modulation wheel to open up a filter here. Um, and then we have the piano here, which just adds notes in the backbeat. And at the end, we have a little bit of a slide and then we go into uh, triplets here. further adding to this idea of like, you know, we've finally arrived at triplet feel. Uh, here we have uh, a little bit of a reverse that just adds a little bit of something to it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Here's just a doubled up piano. Right, that's kind of that. And then we have the last chorus, which is again, the exact same as the second chorus and it ends on this outro. And that was it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in me analyzing and showing you guys how the vocal session for this song looks like, uh, we can totally make a video about that as well. That's another 40, 50 tracks or so uh, that are added on top of the tracks that you've just heard and that we've just talked about. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, let me know by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. And also subscribe, obviously. Who are you for not subscribing to this channel? Come on, you know you want to subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Keep writing and stay gefährlich.